Good evening. I'm David Assad, Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Fall River. It's 6 p.m. on Tuesday, June 30th, 2020. We are meeting at one government center in the atrium. This meeting is being conducted pursuant to Governor Baker's order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, dated March 12th, 2020, at 8.40 p.m. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, Subsection F, I hereby notify all persons in attendance that this meeting is being recorded with both video and audio devices. Our recording secretary this evening, Brittany Farrier, the lady to my far left, is recording an audio version of the Fall River and Fall River Government TV, Alex Mello, is recording both a video and audio version. If anyone desires to make an audio, video, or combination recording thereof, please notify me now and I shall make a public announcement of your intention. Okay. <coughs> present this evening, um, physically present in the atrium, our permanent members, Vice Chair Carolyn Morissette and Dan Dupere. Uh, remotely, our members John Frank III, Jim Corkins, and alternate member Joe Pereira. Uh, Brittany, have all petitions to be considered been properly advertised and all interested parties notified in accordance with the rules and regulations of the Zoning Board of Appeals in Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A as amended? Yes. I declare the June 30th, 2020 scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Fall River open for such business as shall regularly come before it. I remind all persons presenting before the board, including the petitioners, abutters, anyone in support or anyone opposed to the petition, that your presentation should be limited to three minutes. Questions and responses must be directed through the chairman. The board's rules and regulations direct the board to specifically look for information which supports the petitioner's claim. As such, the petitioner should identify and factually support the basis for the petition. I hereby advise the petitioners and all interested persons that this board is the Zoning Board of Appeals. This board's authority exists pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A and is limited in scope and deals with the use of land as regulated by Chapter 86 of the Ordinances of the City of Fall River. Additional permits, licenses, reviews, and or approvals may be required for the specific development and or use which is the subject of the petition before the zoning board this evening. The clerks in the building, planning, engineering, and licensing departments are competent in the discharge of their duties as clerks. They are, however, not lawyers and are not competent to give legal advice. The action taken by this board has a real and lasting effect upon the title to your real estate. I urge all petitioners to seek competent legal counsel before filing your petitions and after a decision of the board has been made. For example, there is a city ordinance 2015-11, section 10-1, requiring site plan reviews. A copy of the ordinance is available at the city clerk's office or from the planning department. I remind everyone that the building inspector is the zoning enforcement authority, and you are here this evening because the building inspector has determined that your proposed action is contrary to the City of Fall River's zoning ordinances. The City Charter, Section 9-18, mandates that all multiple member bodies develop and adopt rules or policy for public comment. We have adopted such a policy, which in short provides for citizen input on zoning board specific matters at the end of this meeting. I disclose that an official copy of the Fall River zoning ordinance is available at the City Clerk's Office one cannot rely on the online zoning ordinance. I also disclose that a new recodified edition approved by the Planning Board and City Council in accordance with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A, Section 5, now with its yellow cover, is the official copy with the last ordinance number 2019-23 incorporated therein. I cannot participate this evening in item 010203. Those items will be heard with a full farm member board with Attorney Carolyn Morissette, Vice Chair, chairing the meeting, and with alternate member Joe Pereira filling in the fifth seat. 
Are there any questions before we begin this evening? Hearing none, Carolyn, I now turn the meeting over to you for agenda item 01, 02, and 03. Thank you. All right, agenda item 01, Patricia Conley and Pamela Rigo, care of Gloria Pacheco, Esquire, vacant lot, Grinnell Street, lot F, 1720. This was tabled from our February 20th meeting. It's a variance request to build a single family home, waiving the requirements in the R4 district. The lot size is 5,180 square feet. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Gloria Pacheco. I'm an attorney here with an office located at 411 Columbia Street in Fall River. I'm here this evening representing uh, Ms. Patricia Connolly and Ms. Pamela Rigo, two sisters. I have Ms. Pamela Rigo with me here tonight. Her sister is unable to attend. They are the owners of the vacant lot on Grinnell Street. As you mentioned, um, Assessor's Platt, F17, Lot 20. Um, this lot has been vacant and has been in my client's family since 1944, for 76 years. Um, right now, the lot's in an R4 district, which is a two-family uh, zoning district. However, if you look at the uh, ten of butters, uh, of the ten of butters, only uh, seven of them are single-family homes. One is a four-family, and only one is actually a two-family home. Um, we are seeking permission to waive the use requirement to build a single family home, as well as to waive the dimension requirements to build a single family home. Um, and, and as I said, granting a, uh, the variance for a single family home will not be detrimental to this neighborhood because the majority of the homes currently there are uh, single family homes and uh, none of the, well, several of the abutters don't meet the current zoning regulations. Um, as we know, before Chapter 48 was enacted in 1954, um, because this, this lot has been held in, uh, by single ownership uh, independently of any of the abutters for 76 years, before Chapter 50, 40A was, was enacted in 1954, um, this lot would have been grandfathered in and we could have built something on it. However, the, the issue here is the frontage is only 46 feet frontage instead of the required 50 feet frontage. That's why we're here before you tonight. And is it you, in 75 frontage that's required? Right, but had, um, had it been a 50 foot frontage? Current, it would have been grandfathered yes, in, right? Yes. But by well, today, it's 75 foot frontage. It, yes, it is. Okay. Yep. And like I said, the lots, uh, the lot was purchased by uh, my client's grandparents. It was then given to her aunt. The aunt gave it to her mom, and her mom gave it to her two daughters, who are my two clients here tonight. Only one is present. Um, so again, in this two-family zone district, the minimum area requirements is 6,000 square feet. However, we are requesting to build a single-family home, and this lot currently has 5,180 square feet because it has a depth of 112. Again, only 46 in the front, but plenty of depth. So we're asking um, for, we're seeking permission to waive the use in this two-family zone to a single family to build a single-family home, excuse me, and permission to waive the minimum frontage of 46 and the minimum side yard of 10 feet to 8 feet, and the minimum area requirements of 6,000 feet to 5,180. Again, this lot has been held in um, a separate ownership since before Chapter 40A was enacted in 1954. This lot is vacant and abandoned. If you drove by the lot at some point recently, there's overgrown, it's, it's just completely overgrown grass at least four feet tall. Uh, it's, it's actually a little bit of an, it's a lot of an eyesore actually. And uh, the best use of this land would be to build a brand new single family home, which again would be in conformity with the neighborhood since that would make it the eighth out of the 10 of butters that are single family homes. Um, uh, and do you, I don't know if you have any questions regarding um, the home that we're proposing to build. So, so you're, me you're my seeking client. Um, a use variance than side yard and minimum frontage, correct? And minimum area, because you only have 5180 versus 6,000 square feet total. Okay. 
And again, not, I, I, I don't think, and well, very, most of the butters don't meet the current zoning guidelines, so I don't think it'll be detrimental to the neighborhood. If anything, we're gonna get rid of that overgrown grass that's right now a blight and a little bit of, not a little bit of an eyesore, it's actually an eyesore to the neighborhood. Do any members of the board have questions? John Frank? Yes, Carol, Carolyn. Uh, any questions? Our district, uh, Jim Calkins, any questions? For single, oh, my mic is not working. No, it's working. Uh, you're not hearing this? We, we can hear you, it's faint. Oh, okay. Uh, the R4 district, uh, according to the chart, I have allows single-family uh, units. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear him. Can you can you repeat that? Sorry. Our Ford uh, district allows single-family units. The district allows single-family units. Uh, my records show it's in an R4. Yes. R4 is for yes, it's zone two family. Yes, but if you look at the chart, it allows allowable usage is single family dwelling. It has a Y in there. Okay. Uh, that's the chart on um, whatever it is. I, Where are you in the chart? On, on R4. Uh, 86 attachment 2 R4 multifamily R4 district it's got a Y under single family dwelling any other questions Dan any questions Joe any questions no is there anybody here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Can I get a motion by a member of the board? I'll move to grant. Any conditions? The uh, minimum setbacks as set forth in the plan, eight foot side yard, 46 foot frontage, minimum two off street parking. And there's nothing constructed on the lot now, so there's no need to tear anything down. Correct. That's second? my motion. Thank you. Is there a second? No second. I'll second it. Okay, we have a second by Dan Dupere. I'll to a roll call vote. John Frank? Aye. Jim Calkins? Yes. Dan Dupair? Yes. Joe Pereira? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay. With Thank those you. conditions. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 02, Broadway Properties, LLC, care of Gloria Pacheco, Esquire, it's 1172 to 1174 Bedford Street, lot L91. This is an amended petition, I believe from the February 20th meeting. It's a various request to construct approximately 3,000 square feet, three unit rent retail building, waiving requirements in the BN district. The lot size is 12,671 square feet. Good evening. My name is Gloria Pacheco. I'm an attorney here with an office um, on Columbia Street in Fall River. I'm here with my client, um, Broadway Properties, LLC. Uh, with me present tonight is also the manager, Mr. Joe Pacheco, if you have any questions for him or for me. I'm just getting settled in, sorry. Uh, Madam Chair, as you said, um, we are here petitioning for um, a variance in this uh, BN zoning district, which is a neighborhood shopping district. Um, I think most of us know this, um, this area very well. This is a vacant lot on the corner of Bedford Street and Oak Grove Avenue. 
we've seen it uh, obviously overgrown with a lot of um, uh, you know wild grass and of course unfortunately with vacant lots comes debris we are asking for requests to build a retail space with three units in that area and we're asking for permission to waive the dimension dimensional requirements setback and minimum area requirements along with the parking requirements as you know Bedford Street is um, mixed use as I said and uh, right on that street we have a new pizza place opened up a couple of years ago we have the iconic Marzelli's and Marcucci's um, places and we think that adding uh, a brand new retail space in this location would be ideal especially you know because that is uh, a very busy road and mixed um, both mixed residential and uh, business uses um, again uh, we think a new space will bring some more vitality to the area and again the vacant lots just uh, you know create you know collecting debris as you can see by the plan that was submitted we are we will be uh, landscaping the area so It'll be nice to remove, you know, that eyesore. You, we have landscaping all around. We have 15 parking spots for the three uh, retail spaces. Um, and again, this is a corner, um, corner lot, which is currently vacant. So we are hoping that this is another success story for the city of Fall River. My current client, Broadway Properties, has very successfully, has another um, very successful retail space on the corner of, of Broadway and Hope Street, which, you know, is thriving if you ever go by there. So he hopes to do the same thing here with this, this location. From what, uh, if you could address uh, some of the concerns I believe we had at the last meeting were, was the parking and then the traffic flow, if my memory is correct. Can you address those again? Yes. I don't believe we've actually met on this before. We haven't. No. Okay. This was tabled because we didn't have a quorum because um, Chairman Assad had to recuse himself. Okay. So this is, and, and then we, we, I just, we amended it. So we never right. had a hearing I on apologize. this. I apologize. That's okay. But I, I do have some concerns about sure. the traffic flow and parking. It is yes. a pretty tight area there. Yes. Mr. Pacheco, um, so he's, if you have any questions, either he or I can answer, because he's closer to the project than I am, obviously. Okay. Could you just speak more into the microphone so the board members can hear? Not hearing anything. He, they're not hearing you? No, 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 that's not what's going on. Give me one second. We talk, it's the microphone's not even on. Want to testing? Is it working? Yes, there you go. I tried to speak a little louder because I was like this. At one time, we submitted a plan, uh, and then we got a call from the uh, old planner uh, to go and see him, uh, and also someone from, from the administration that they thought the plan that we had submitted, the building was a little bigger. So what we did, reduced the plan and increased the parking space. And that's what the, uh, so it was reviewed at the time with the, the planner. So it was less parking spaces and less building. So we did the opposite. We reduced the building from 4,000 to 3,000 and, and increased, I think, the parking spaces from 11 to 15. So that's what we revised that at the time. But it was never before the plan. This, okay. this planning, well, the zoning of the exactly. bills was just within the planning board that we adjusted the, those I, items. I believe it was Bill Roth that gave us a call uh, with some of his suggestions for this site, as he said, to decrease the building space. Uh, to th did you say 3,000 square feet? It was from 4,000 to 3,000. Yes, and, there and thereby allowing additional parking. Okay. That's what it was. So there could have been a discussion in the office, yes. And yeah, how, how will one enter the stores, facility so through uh, Oak Grove? Oak Grove. Or? No entrances or exits on Bedford Street. So the exit is going to be on the um, Oak Grove only. Oak Grove. And what type of retail businesses do you envision there? Uh, <laughs> you just never know. I'm going to give an example of what I have, uh, like uh, Gloria Pacheco, Attorney Pacheco mentioned. We have a little plaza on the corner of Hope and, and the, uh, Hope and Broadway, which is full. Something very similar. 
there's a we have a pizza hut we have a uh, nail salon we have a laundromat that type of uh, client, uh, tenants Chinese restaurant. Ch China <laughs> That's yeah, my go-to place. Um, um, Madam Chair, can you see Oak Grove Avenue here? I'm not sure if you have the revised plan that was submitted in front of you. And the engineer tried to um, denote the parking entrance and exit on Oak Grove Ave. Okay. Can, is that too small there? Do any members of the board have questions? John Frank? Yeah, I have a, one question regarding, um, it, it's it's only five feet from the property line, and if I remember correctly, there was yes. an issue with this right next door, there's a pizza place, and their vent, I think, comes out and juts out into that property. There's uh, their, their exhaust vent. Um, I, I, it's just something that stuck out in my head from, I think, the past. There was something on that lot before where we were trying to do something a while ago and there was something with that vent. They had to go up higher with it or something. I, I just, I'm just concerned about it being, that building is almost on the property line and then this one's only gonna be five feet from the property line. I'm just concerned about uh, emergency access um, in the back of the building and um, just the layout. And the other concern is that's a really bad intersection um, so I just would require site plan if, if it does go forward because the, that turn is, is um, that, if that building's coming all the way out to the sidewalk like that, that turn is, is tough. I think that was one of Bill Roth's concern too. Um, and that's, that's, that's why we only have egress, um, you know, coming in and out of the lot on the Oak Grove Avenue to alleviate any burden on that corner. Uh, can you can I address the issues uh, about the vents and being close to the property? My property on about on Broadway, the rear to the gas station is very similar. They're exactly five feet, and the, all the vents from the laundromat go to those five feet, and it's able to, to handle all that. Same thing with I have a Pizza Hut, and we have a, a Chinese restaurant, and everything uh, it, it can handle all that. The five feet, that's doable. Now, I never looked at the present uh, pizza plate to see what the issue is there with the, uh, with the vent, but I think, based on my experience, uh, we, sh we should be able to handle that. Okay, and the other issue with the, uh, with the entrance, if you look at the plan, the entrance is away from Bedford Street, far into uh, Oak Grove for that reason. So we don't want to be too close to the corner because that's why it's pretty much at the end of the lot on Oak Grove Street side. I know that was that was my my concern is you're only three feet from the street. In the very front, uh, that would be south, southeast corner, southwest corner, and um, that turn, that intersection is is tough, and and that's that was the one concern that I really have, and well, the the closeness. It, <laughs> I just I, I I frequent that area regularly. And I've been in that pizza place a bunch of times. I know that vent was an issue because I it, it stood out to me at one point that it was standing out or coming out the side of the building, and you're five feet from that. I'm I'm not so much concerned about you being able to fit your equipment up. I'm I'm concerned about an emergency situation with a fire department or somebody needing to get in there. That's very very tight um, for for someone to have access. Well, the, well, the building is kind of small. Three thousand square feet. It, it's a very small building. If God forbid something were to happen, that's something they can handle f from the left to right or the front. It's not a huge building. So you know, I, and five feet, like I said, it, it's it's doable. Uh, and due to the size of the building being so small, it's it's not really. I don't see a large or a big issue for to handle if there is God forbid a fire or something of that nature. Can I clarify? I'm, I'm sorry, John. Yeah, no, go ahead. Can I clarify something? Um, Mr. Pacheco, the, as he says, it's five feet to one side, four feet to one side, and then at the narrowest point, it's three feet. But that's three feet of landscaping to the sidewalk, correct? That's for the sidewalk, yes. And then the, there's yeah. the, the street. Right. The, that, okay, just to clarify yeah, it yeah. so there's no misunderstandings. And yeah. Attorney Pacheco, why don't you clarify what exactly are the setback requirements you're asking for? 
Yes. So uh, the current zoning uh, regulations require a rear yard of 25. We are asking for five. Again, this is a very old neighborhood, as we're all very familiar with, and having two or three feet, you know, between two structures is very common. And so the five and the five feet uh, to so the you have twenty and you're short five. Yes, okay. I'm sorry, no, I'm short twenty. The minimum rear yard is twenty-five, 25. per the zoning regulations. You only have five. So you're short twenty. Yes. Okay. Um, and then the side yard would be 35. We only have four, and at one point we have three feet, so we're short 31 and 32, respectively. Again, and that is all landscaped area, which then goes to the sidewalk. So it's not as if someone, you know, jumps the curb, they'd be hitting the, the building. They'd be landscaping there just as a barrier. Can, can, I, can I say something? Yes. Uh, this, that's exactly what we hear. This is a hardship because without, if we were to follow those setbacks, we're just going to put a building in the middle of that lot and we have no parking space, no parking uh, area to park the vehicles because based on those setbacks, 30 and 25 35, and 30, 20, 35 uh, and 25. Pretty much puts that building in the middle and we have no way of doing creating parking. And that's the reason that we have. Uh, that's our hardship. It's creating parking space. That's why we ask for those two setbacks to be waived. Okay. And are those the only two setbacks you're seeking? Um, we also need. I'm sorry, the frontage. Uh, sorry. Minimum frontage. What's the front? I'm sorry. I'm getting it caught off guard. I, I had a little asthma attack before, prior to the meeting. <laughs> Mr. Pacheco, I, I is the frontage on Oak Grove Ave or Bedford Street? Oak Grove. Oak Grove is the frontage. So we have frontage. It's 123, so we have frontage. I apologize, Madam Chair. Uh, minimum front is should be 35. We have uh, 18 plus 24, so that's fine. So it would be um, side yard and rear yard. Yeah, pretty much the, what we're asking to waive is, is to two setbacks, which is rear and side on the Bedford Street side. All, all the other ones, all the, all the setbacks on the left, the front, we meet all those. And again, the parking setback requirements as well. So we're asking to waive dimensional setback and minimum area requirements and the parking setback requirements as well. That's the other, uh, the other, the other um, request we're making. Okay. Any other questions, John Frank? Uh, no, I just I clarified the uh, the vent. I don't know if you can see it, but the vent is not there. The vent they moved around the back of the building, so um, that vent doesn't stick out that side anymore like it I thought it originally did. Thank you. Oh, Appreciate that it. was that was quick uh, research. <laughs> uh, Thank you. I uh, I I want to clarify for myself to make sure I'm saying the right thing, okay. but um, I at that building I know for a fact is very 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 close to the property line if not okay. on the property line so that was the one thing I was concerned about the five foot there but that's all I have okay. thank you thank Jim, you very much Jim Hawkins any questions no no okay. Dan Dupair no question Joe Pereira I, I, I do and again I just want to echo uh, what my associate said that the five foot setback concerns me and my question would be on that Normally, retail businesses get their deliveries at the back. This I'm sorry. Could you please repeat that? I'm sorry. Could you please repeat your question? Your normally, a retail business, normally, a retail business is getting deliveries at a rear door. And obviously, there cannot be any such deliveries here. So I just want to clarify that the intention is that anyone occupying this is getting their deliveries through their retail space, correct? Yes, I have several business clients. I have one client who owns eight Domino stores. Delivery is their main is their main um, uh, uh, you know uh, thrust of their business. They don't have any rear door. All of his drivers go in and out of the front door. Again, Mr. Pacheco has a Pizza Hut on Broadway. Again, they only have a front door for the deliveries. Papa John's across the street also only has one door. 
So let delivery? me clarify that. Uh, based on the square footage of each unit, it's not about a, about a thousand feet. Do not you do not need two exits. So we won't. We're not planning to put an exit door in the rear. So we're only going to have the front door because it's a small unit and it's not required by code to have two exits. So therefore, it won't be any uh, exit doors in the in the rear of the building. All right. It's, it's not required by code. I misunderstood your question. No, I haven't sorry. said that. If someone comes in and takes the whole, the whole building, then at that time, we wouldn't require another door. Yes. Sorry, I misheard your concern. No, my, my concern is that there is only five feet to the rear. And part of that comes to, is a business going to receive all of their, their deliveries through their retail space? Mr. Pachuca's answer is yes. And uh, again, knowing that we've got another building in very close proximity, I do have a safety concern on that, which would certainly come under the purview of, of site plan, I'm, I'm sure, or under the, the purview of um, code enforcement. But there just seems to be an issue with getting an emergency vehicle behind that building in the case, God forbid, that there's a fire, et cetera. That, that's a grave. I would love to see this lot redeveloped. I really would. But those issues. Um, the amount of variance that we're looking for on those two lot lines, I think is rather severe. And that, that five foot across the back is, is, seems to be a big concern to me. Okay, all right. Is there anyone here in support of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Can I have a motion by a member of the board? I move approval based uh, pending site plan review. With the dimensions as laid out for the rear, the side. Well, I, I, I would think that it may be possible to move that down a little. I, I don't have dimensions aren't shown on this uh, plan as much as they usually are. Uh, that maybe the building could move down a little but you know, it's site plan. I, I I will allow it as is, but I would encourage maybe some adjustments in site plan review. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. I'll do a roll call vote. John Frank? Yes. Jim Calkins? Yes. Dan Dupair? Yes. Joe Pereira? No. And I vote no as well. So with that, the petition failed. Thank you. Have a good evening. Moving on to agenda item number 03, Ian Carey, 60 Garside Street, lot S, 1144. This was tabled from our February 20th meeting. It's a special permit request pursuant to section 86.424 to change the existing non-conforming use of a commercial bank into a 10-unit apartment development consisting of five two-unit buildings with garages and off-street parking. The lot size is 35,474 square feet. Um, so I would just direct our board members that um, 86424 is non-conforming uses of land. The Board of Appeals may grant a special permit to change or extend a non-conforming use in accordance with this section, only if it determines that such change or extension shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood. The following types of changes to non-conforming uses may be considered by the Zoning Board of Appeals. A change or substantial extension of the use or a change from one conforming use to another, equally appropriate or more appropriate non-conforming use. Good evening. For the record, my name is Dan Aguiar. I'm a senior project manager at SciTech Engineering with addresses here in the city as well as Dartmouth and Marshfield. Um, the parcel before you this evening is with regards to 60 Garside Street. You will probably all know it as the St. Michael's Credit Union Church, um, which is accessed just off of Brightman Street as you're heading 
west on Brightman Street, go past the little gas station on your right, that is Garside Street. Then directly on the left um, was St. Michael's Credit Union for a number of years. And as you see on the plan that I have up here, I have an existing conditions plan which is closer to me that shows the existing building shaded in pink, the existing paved area shaded in gray, and then the grass area shaded in green. You'll see directly to our west um, is the railroad line, and there's also a zoning line there to a G district. Uh, directly to our north, there is an existing single family house, and directly to our south, uh, there is a commercial uh, garage and another storage garage with it. So when the bank was looking at getting rid of this property, there was a time when they just discussed keeping somewhat of a branch there, renting it to another bank, some other type of commercial use. And they threw around a bunch of different ideas, daycare centers, churches, things of that nature. Um, they ended up selling the property when they, when they couldn't decide the direction to go in. They ended up selling the property to Hyde Development LLC, which came to me and said, you know, what can we do with this property? So we took a, a look at it, and again, with the commercial uses that we could have filed a special permit for, again, a number of different uses that would have been similar in, uh, in density and intensity as the existing bank. So when we sat down and we sat and spoke with the planner, who was Bill Roth at the time, we discussed, well, maybe we should bring a residential use to the property since basically everything else around it is a residential use. It is zoned R4. So we talked about different densities, different types and styles of buildings. And because we were in the R4 district, which is a two-family district, or up to a two-family district, uh, Bill thought and, and we thought, well, we should probably keep the buildings down to two-family buildings, not a three-family building, not a singular unit with 12 units in it. So we wanted to keep the actual structures so that they would meet the bylaw requirement of a two-family structure, although different density on the lot itself. Then we have the, the issue of we have a 34,000 plus square foot parcel of land with over, I believe, 211 feet of frontage. So this is a big piece of land in the middle of the city. Um, and we could do a, a number of things with it. As you see again on the drawing, I believe 85% of the lot, sorry, 68.5% of the lot right now is considered impervious. Also in our design, we wanted to increase landscaping. We wanted to minimize the amount of impervious cover. So with, with the plan that we were allowed to put together, we have proposed five duplex buildings for a total of 10 units. You'll see an interior driveway with driveways to each of the buildings. Each building would have a garage space and then a space before the garage meeting the zoning requirements for parking. So we would have two spaces per unit. We were also able to create an additional parking area to the north that could provide 10 additional spaces. So with the size buildings that we were proposing and the, the common access drive through the center and that parking area, we were able to get the impervious cover down to 55.5%, so a 13% decrease in impervious cover. And when we're talking about drainage and dealing with the environment, whenever we can get that impervious cover down, it's a benefit to the site. So then we get to Section 86, 424. We, we had a discussion. We came up with, well, this is what we want to build. How do we get there? Well, 86, 424, as the chairman said, um, gives the Zoning Board of Appeals by a special permit the ability to grant or allow this to take place when they determine, or if they determine, that the proposed use is no more detrimental than the existing use. So we take a bank, excuse me, rather large building, uh, parking area, drive through this northerly uh, driveway serves as a drive through going wrapping around the building so we had a driveway very close drive through very close to that single family dwelling which is the only conforming parcel in the neighborhood everyone else due either due to a frontage square footage or a number of units doesn't comply with with the bylaw either so that was the one uh, one parcel that did comply so with the amount of traffic lighting, um, just overall use of the property, 
uh, as a bank, it could get very, very busy, although be it during different hours um, in comparison to other types of commercial units or residential units. So we had thought, well, let's take the units, let's move them as far away from that conforming parcel as possible. Um, the traffic generated by five duplex buildings is far less than a bank probably even on its slowest days other than when it's closed. Uh, we were able to remove all of the lighting. This building now, um, the exterior lighting around the building lights up that parcel like, like there's no tomorrow. So we think that the proposal will be far less detrimental than the existing commercial building, which was the bank, or any other type of commercial unit that we would potentially come back to you and, and seek to allow to use that structure, basically using the same provision. So rather than try and force in some other type of commercial use, the owners felt that this was a fair um, proposal to, to file under 86 424. One thing that we did do when we looked at to come up with what the density was, when you take an R4 district and you have 6,000 square feet for the first unit and 2,000 square feet for each additional unit after that, we made sure that our total project, if we went in that same direction, the area would still meet what the requirements would be. The structures themselves will meet the building setbacks for the district, which were 10 on the sides, 15 in the front, and 20 in the rear. You see those dimensions on the plan as well. Uh, so as far as impervious cover, we've met the, the requirements. Building setbacks, we've met the requirements. Parking, we've met the requirements. Um, what we're really down to is just our five duplexes less detrimental to the neighborhood than an existing commercial bank or potentially other commercial building. That's all. How big will each of the individual units be? The footprint, I'm gonna put my glasses on. Building number four, you have the plan. Each box is 36 by 24. Now, there will be a second floor, and there will be a garage yeah, underneath. I don't think he, they can hear you. Okay. Could so you repeat that into the microphone? Each, each pod, each unit is basically 36 by 24. We take a 12 by 20 swath out of the first, the main unit for a garage, and then there will be a second floor as well. So again, my math's not that strong, but if somebody wants to do 24 by 36 and multiply it times two, that's roughly the square footage of each unit. Is it two bedroom, three bedroom? Um, it would be two, like with an office. Some people, if you have wanted to, to get a three, you could probably get a three out of it, but it would be tight. So I'm thinking they would be two bedroom units with some type of office or den space associated with it. Okay. Nobody else's math is any better than mine to come up with that square footage, I guess. Can and you do can, it? You want me to do it? <laughs> 24 by 36. And <laughs> while Dan is doing the math, so you're not seeking, um, if this passes the first prong of the special permit, you're not seeking any setback requirements? No, no. On, on the, you'll see on the southerly boundary, we have a 10-foot offset to the deck. Okay. Um, to the street, we've actually pushed it back, I believe, beyond what's required. 15 is required as a front yard? Yes, 15 is required. We're at 15, and then in the rear lot line to the railroad, we would meet the 24 requirement. And what about the minimum frontage and width? That should be 75. What is? We have 211. 211. Okay. Right. I mean, it's, it's a big piece of land with a lot of frontage that could be developed in many, many different ways. Um, Rather than having a number of single families in there with separate driveways, this kind of got everybody into one location, one singular driveway, and then the overflow parking will probably never be used, but it's there in case anybody ever wanted to visit. Uh, 36 uh, by 24 is 864 you're, you're times 2, 1728. 1728 total? Is 15. So say 1,800 square feet for each unit. Okay. Do any members of the board have questions? John Frank, yeah, uh, Jim Calkins. Yes, uh, you indicated the setback is 10 feet and the requirement is 15 feet. No. The, the, or my, I, my, oh wait. 10 foot side yard. One. Oh wait, yep, yeah, wrong one. But side yard, ah, correction, wrong, I was. <laughs> Any other questions, Jim? Nope. Okay. Dan? No. Joe? No. Nope. Okay. 
Is there anybody here in favor of this petition? Is there anybody here opposed to this petition? Is there a motion by a member of the board? I'll make the motion that it is not more detrimental. Do we have to do a two-part on this one? Yes, the two-part one. So the first part is we have to determine it shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. I have a roll call vote. Joe, Joe, Fr I'm sorry, John Frank. Yes. Jim Calkins. Yes. Dan Dupair. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. And I vote yes as well. So then we go to the second prong uh, to consider. Actually, no. It's all. The second prong would just be to. We don't need to address any setback requirements. Then. No, right. we're not asking for any waiver of, of setback yeah. requirements. No. Okay. So then this petition would pass. Right, but you should still be a sec separate vote. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. I'll make the motion that it goes forward uh, with site plan review as stipulation. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll that as well. Okay, we'll do roll call vote. John Frank? Yes. Jim Calkins? Yes. Dan Dupair? Yes. Joe Pereira? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you very much. Have a nice holiday. We'll see you at the regularly scheduled meeting on July 16th. Yes. He said no. Are we ready to proceed uh, with agenda items 004, Farmington Limited Partnership, care of Peter Salino Esquire, 400 Columbia Street, lot N252. This matter was tabled from the February 20th, 2020 meeting. This part is a variance request to waive the front and side yard setback requirements in the CBD Commercial Business District and to expand the assisted living facility by adding a two-story, three-unit facility, lot size 82,713 plus or minus square feet. Good evening for purposes of the record. My name is Peter Solino. I am the attorney for the petitioner and I maintain law offices at 550 Locust Street here in Fall River. As Mr. Chairman alluded to, this was a February 20th petition. At the time of our meeting in February, I was seeking a variance and or, meaning in the alternative, a special permit uh, to facilitate the construction of 33 memory care units at the site located at 400 Columbia Street in Fall River, also known as the Landmark. At the conclusion of that meeting, the matter was continued to what we thought was going to be a March meeting and obviously we're continued to today because the city planner at the time was Bill Roth and he expressed concerns relative to the employee parking that was orally represented uh, to this board on the northwesterly side of the uh, parcel. And he also had some concerns about flow, traffic flow in particular. Subsequent to the February 20th meeting, there was a site walk conducted. My client was present, Mr. Roth was present, and a representative from Farland Engineering was president. Uh, present. The plan that is before you this evening is a byproduct of that meeting. And I'd just like to highlight the fact that uh, we have on the northwesterly uh, side of the property included designated employee parking spaces, turnaround areas, uh, a couple of signage matters related to short-term parking. Uh, furthermore, the parking requirement in the bottom left of the drawing has been updated so as to indicate that we've provided 52 spaces and the requirement based on the bylaw and the number of beds would be 32. So we've well exceeded the parking requirement. I believe that this plan meets with what Mr. Roth asked of us. And so we're here before you tonight then to indicate that we believe we have complied with the requests of the board and we will put it in your hands relative to whether or not it is a variance or special permit. I believe they would be separate agenda matters as I have pled them in the alternative, but they all come from a common nucleus of facts. So in practicality, we'd probably talk about them all as one. I'll take any specific questions the board has. So the variance 
So agenda item number four deals with the variance parts of your Correct. petition. And what you, what you show on your application, you're looking for a zoning variance for front yard and side yard setback requirements. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. And so why don't you take us through those parts with directors Certainly. on the plan and tell so us. So if you're looking at the plan and specifically on the Columbia Street side, which is the south side, you'll see the proposed uh, building. It's proposed to be two stories and it's proposed to have 33 units. The front yard setback is not met. There's a uh, arrow and a 1.5 written there. That is deficient uh, based on the city's bylaw because the requirement is 12 feet and we only have 1.5. The side yard is the Pearl Street side. It's labeled as such on the plan. And the requirement for side yard is 10 feet and our proposed setback is only six feet. So those are the two variances that we are referring to, Mr. Chairman. So those are, the, those are the two dimensional variances that you need Correct. for this building? Correct. Okay. So it's a foot and a half along Columbia Street where the frontage there had to be 12 feet. That is correct. And the Pearl Street, if we call that a side yard, um, the setback was 10 feet and you're showing 5.5 uh, feet. Is that correct? That is correct. Section B, the petitioner seeks a variance or an expansion of the relief related to a disallowed use in a commercial business district under the variance decision dated April 24th, 1997 to add the 33 more units. Uh, so under Section B, I think we all have that decision in the package, in your packages, so you could refer to that where there was a variance granted and the specific or the express terms of that uh, were uh, th that there shall be no exterior expansion to the building. Correct. That was the limitation that was put on the variance of December 20th, 2011. So the building uh, requires, if we if we say the building without looking at the, at the previous variants, uh, so we have to deal with the front yard and side yard waivers that they're looking for. And then we look to the overall uh, limitation or prohibition that existed in the 2001 uh, grant of variance that said there shall be no exterior expansion of the building. So, uh, so that's what we have to wrestle with on this part of it right now for the variance part. Um, so, any questions of the board? Um, Dan? This spot up here, the 24 foot turnaround? Yes. Now, the employees, where do they gain access from? Uh, the Columbia Street side, and you can also gain access from the Millican Boulevard side. So, currently, that, is that going to change? No, that's currently there. They wanted it shown on the plan. They being Bill Roth. So, so why is there a turnaround? Because the because Bill wanted it. All right. And what's the what's the width on that? It says twenty four one way. What about the other way? I mean, if it's symmetrical, it looks like twelve feet. I I would surmise it's twelve, but I don't see that on the drawing, so I'd have to. Get that verified for you, Mr. Chair. Right, so no, after, no, no, no. after the construction, you'll still be able to get out the other way and not utilize that? Yes, because the construction is all contemplated to occur on the Pearl Street, Columbia Street side. That's really the only piece of the site that lends itself to any construction. All right. The alleyway, the piece that you're looking at is sort of a narrow alleyway, so you wouldn't be able to build a building up there. Right. If right. you remember, that's what we were talking well, no, about. I know that was the issue, but you're not going to turn around in the 12-foot 12 12 12 right. area, so we're going to go... That's right. No, but right. I'm saying that last time that was what yeah, the discussion was about in the back. Yeah, it was all terrible. That's right. Okay. okay. That hasn't changed a bit. Uh, John Frank, any questions? No. Jim Calkins? No. Carolyn Morissette? No. Okay. Um, all right. Is there any. 
Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Yeah. The chair recognizes Mr. Tony Pacheco. Director Butter, go identify yourself for the record. Uh, Joe Pacheco, 411 Columbia Street. I I'm not against the project. Uh, I just want to make a, a comment. Uh, my only concern, this is right across from my office, it's fo the foot and a half from Columbia Street. I think the board should consider probably increase that setback. That's the only comment I have to make. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pacheco. All right, is there anyone else in favor or against this petition? Well, so that's the variance request part, uh, agenda item number 004. So do we want to grant a variance to say we're going to amend or change the variance from 2001 to allow the expansion um, to have an exterior expansion of the building, which is going to be the two floors that's going to house the 33 units? Uh, or do we say no, that the decision of 2001 stays, and if we say that, then everything else concerning the variance part falls away? So we either get a motion to grant um, with some conditions, or we get a motion to deny based on the 2001 decision, uh, or if we just don't like the project. So. Can I get a motion to grant or a motion to deny? Uh, Mr. Oh, Chairman, I, hear, I, I just I oh, Jim Clark. have a question first. Go ahead. Uh, under 86, for location layout of parking and loading space, parking spaces should be located on the same lot as a building or use which they are intended to serve, except they may be provided on the journey lot in the same ownership. Is, is that other parking lot in the same ownership? Yes, Mr. Coggins. Uh, all right. The same, I, I believe the petition that I've been reading and the petition that we've been dealing with uh, has only one owner, one owner, and it's the same individual that signed both as the applicant and the owner, which is uh, Farmington Limited Partnership. That's that correct. correct. They hold records. Yeah, to now it's just referring to the supplemental parking. Is that fall yeah. under that provision? No, that's a good question. I, I was assuming and assumptions make uh, wrong decisions sometimes. So I'm glad you asked the question. And I'm glad Attorney Salino answered. <laughs> I'm glad he answered the way he did. No, I mean, so am I. But I mean, I, I just, looking at the petition that's presented, um, yeah. I, I did not do the independent research on the book and page to see whether or not the whole, the representation was that it was Farmington Limited Partnership. So. We're back to the original question, uh, a motion to grant, motion to deny. The variance. I move to grant based on the need of the area. Okay, so we have a motion to grant from Jim Calkins. Do we have a second? Okay. Is this on the, this is, this is a two part. Is this on um, the decision to amend the 2001? They, we, we can do them separately if you want, but the, the underlying, we can't grant the variance until, unless and if we deal with the 2001 grant to variance that put the limit, the limitation there. So if you want to deal with that first, if you deal with that first and say no, then everything else is has no, it's moot. Uh, I just want to clarify the motion is for granting the petition, not for granting the up keep of the 2001. We, as I understood Jim's motion, it was to grant the petition, which would be modify the 2001 variance, grant the front yard waiver, grant the side yard waiver. Okay. If, if that's confusing, and if it's confusing to you, then it may be confusing to everyone else and we can do it in separate parts. But if we do the, the 2001 part first, and the answer to that question is no, then everything else falls away. 
Okay? So l let me go back to the motion. Is the motion clear by members of the board? Dan Dupere? Yes. John Frank, yes? The motion is clear. I'm not okay. voting yes. No, no, no. I'm Jim Calkins, that you understand that's what your motion seems to be doing. Yes? Yes. Carolyn? I understand. Okay. Uh, All right. Does we get a second? No. Pardon me? No. No. Oh, no, there was no second yet. So, yeah. we're got, so next thing I'm going to ask for, can I get a motion to deny? I make a motion to deny. So now I have Carolyn making a motion to deny the petition. Do I have a second on that motion? I'll second pursuant to the 2001. Okay. So John Frank seconds that motion pursuant to the 2001 variance not to increase. Any discussion on that motion? Okay. So... Roll call vote, Dan Dupere. Uh, yes. This is a motion to deny. Yes. Yes. So Dan Dupere says yes. John Frank. Jim yes. Calkins. No. No. Vice Chair Carolyn Morissette. Yes. 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 Attorney aside. Attorney aside. Chairman aside, yes. So it's four to one. That motion to grant the variance is denied. That's agenda item number 004. Now let's move to, it. I'm assuming Attorney Salino would like to go forward with agenda item number five. Yes, please. That okay. was why I did it this way. So, agenda item number five, uh, 005, Farmington Limited Partnership, care of Peter Salino, Esquire, um, 400 Columbia Street, lot N252. This was the matter tabled from the February 20th, 2020 meeting. This is a special permit request to expand existing non-conforming use pursuant to section 86.424, waiving front and side yard setback requirements in the CBD district and to expand the assisted living facility by adding two story, adding a two story 33 unit facility lot size 82,713 plus or minus square feet. So. Thank you. Good evening again, members of the board. So Peter Salino for purposes of the record. Uh, the facts are the same as the very last agenda item. I represent Farmington Limited Partnership, the owner of the site. I pled the petition in the alternative seeking either a variance and or special permit. Obviously, the variance was just denied. Therefore, this agenda item is seeking a special permit to expand an already non-conforming use at the site. The CBD district does not allow for residential housing units or nursing home facilities. And as a consequence, the use, in my opinion, could be considered non-conforming as it currently sits. And as a consequence, I believe that under Section 86.424, I can ask for a special permit uh, to allow that non-conforming use to be expanded. And so that is the thrust of this petition. I would submit to you that the proposal is certainly not more detrimental. I think we really pressed last meeting on the detrimental component of it and more specifically the density and traffic and parking requirements. I believe that we've satisfactorily addressed those requirements and as a consequence I don't believe that the inclusion of this addition will be more detrimental to the neighborhood. Uh, to highlight a couple of points in my petition that we talked about last time, of the 33 proposed, issue, uh, proposed units, 24 of them are what they call memory care units, which are folks that don't drive and have Alzheimer's or memory type issues. So it is submitted as part of this petition that we well exceed the parking requirements. Many of the new occupants of the building wouldn't have automobiles in the first place, and that we've sufficiently provided for any visitors who may come with this additional parking. And with that, I'll rest. Okay, thank you. So you have to talk, at least to me, um, again, about the variance from 2001 that created this mm -hmm. and the limitation on the use. How does that variance give us the authority or how does the special permit uh, the non-conforming or change of the non-conforming use of land? How does the board get around the prohibition from that variants of 2001? Uh, I think you get around it a couple of different ways. The Tell first us. the first thing that strikes me here is the need in the community. So I think when you're balancing the detriment, so to me the wording is not as clear in the 2001 variants that you're referring to, Mr. Chairman. I think the 
The variance decisions from that error are probably not as well written as they are in this error. Uh, I mean that as a compliment for examining titles. Um, but I think that the, there's no way that the need could have been foreseen at the time. I think that the studies that my client has done suggest that we are way, we being the Greater Fall River community, are way underutilized or will be underutilized as it relates to these memory care type units. So I think when we look at a special permit standard as opposed to a variant standard, we're weighing and we're, we're doing a subjective analysis based on all the facts and circumstances. And I don't think the prior decision contemplates that kind of a rationale. Let me bring you back to the 1997 decision. Uh, Simsbury Associates in the matter of the petition of Simsbury for the permission to reconstruct existing hotel uh, for the purposes of using and maintaining same as an assisted living facility containing a maximum of 88 units waiving the use and dimensional requirements in the central business district. Uh, it was a five to zero vote unanimously voted to grant the petitioner's request. Um, and in that decision, there's no limiting language. It was just 88 units Correct. that was authorized. So by that variance, and then became a conforming use for the district. Then in 2001, they come back before the board, or someone comes back before the board. That's true. And, and says, this is what we're going to do. The board grants permission to um, construct seven additional units to the existing assisted living facility waiving use and dimensional requirements in the central business district. And, but in this particular one, there was the express prohibition that there shall be no exterior expansion of the building. So what you're asking for is, I think necessarily, an expansion of the existing building. This isn't a standalone facility as I understand it. No, it is not. And the proposal is that it would be connected by a walkway, which is depicted on the uh, you know, a, a closed-in corridor, much like this atrium. No, no, I, I see it, but I mean, it's all going to be on that site, so I'm just trying to get my head around how we denied the variance. The variance had specific limiting language in it, and I know the special permit part, I think you're citing 86424 as being the basis for the board to act. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I think that section gives you a lot of discretion, I guess, is the point. Okay. Thank you. Let's see. What are the other board members have to say. Uh, Dan, any questions? No. no. John Frank? Jim Calkins? No. Attorney Carroll? No. no. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Okay. So we'll start with is there a. I, we need to have a finding if we're going to grant that such change or extension shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood. Uh, I have, just by way of reading what I think the ordinance says, is that because uh, we have the grant of the variance that made it conforming, um, I don't know whether or not we're really asking to extend a non-conforming use because the use was granted by a variance, but if we take it that it is a non-conforming use for the CBD district, do we have a finding? Does someone want to make a motion that there's a finding that the extension shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood? That's if we want to go down the road of maybe granting or considering it. If you don't want to do that, then we just get a motion to deny and having a finding that it is substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use and the special permit aspects of this end. I'll make the motion to deny um, citing the 2001. Okay. If we don't uphold our own decisions to not expand things, they'll just keep going and going and going. No, I understand your reasoning. So motion to deny from John Frank. Do I have a second on the motion? Second. Oh, second. All right. Second from Vice Chair Carolyn Morissette. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? John Frank? Aye. Jim Calkins? No. Dan Dupere? Yes. Vice Chair Carolyn Morissette? Yes. Chairman Assad? Yes. That special permit is denied. Thank you, Attorney Salino. Thank you. Nice presentation.
Do we have any citizens' input? Is anyone out there? John Ferreira, Solino family, Grant, Caroline. Uh, there's nobody else here. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes, I have I an item somebody. of uh, new business. Say, say that again, Jim. Item of new business. You have an item of new business. Yes, what's that? You're frozen. I, I just was wondering what, what you think might be, or the board's thinking might be, oh, is it? I can't. <laughs> You're not hearing it? No? No, no, no. I, I, there's just a pause, so I'm not sure what was happening. So, Yeah, we're oh. going to hear you, Jim. Oh, okay. Uh, my, my, my thinking was uh, whether the board would want to consider the possibility of granting or voting to grant an automatic extension of any permit that has been affected during this period of inactivity in the government uh, from, uh, from a one-year special permit to two-year special, uh, special permit uh, just uh, based on the approval of the planner so that these people don't have to, there be a lot, may be a lot of special permits that are unable to fulfill the requirements in the one year. And so at those that we granted the one year, we automatically extend them a second year if they've been affected by the virus. Um, I think the governor's emergency um, order, I, I think it told statutes of limitations until it's taken, until it's removed. So if anybody is in that particular time, the clock has stopped running. Um, I think the authority under 40A, we don't have the authority to change the statutory scheme. What, uh, but the statutory gives two years. We no, said no, that we can one year we, when, when we voted. That's correct. We have the authority to grant. The petition yes. is May, if this is, a, if this is one of the concerns that you have. Um, I think under 40A section 14, they may be, rather than do a complete petition to come in and ask for the six, the one year extension, they may be able to come in and we have the authority under 14, section 14, to relook at decisions that we've made and maybe under that provision of 40A, grant the additional year or the additional time so it goes out to the additional year for the special permit. Variance my, my, my thinking was to avoid the, the additional cost of advertising yeah. for, the, for the petitioner and the, the scheduling of another uh, item on our agenda that, that if it could be an inclusive because of the very unusual. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I, if you don't think that's advisable, I'd find if you want to, uh, give it some thought and uh, bring it up at our next meeting, that's fine. No, I think it's certainly something to consider. I think statutorily we're precluded from doing that. Uh, it may be something that we can ask the Director of Planning to ask Corporation Council for an opinion on, but my read of 40A uh, doesn't give us the authority to expand the, stat the statutory scheme. But, but again, we'll take we're, it under we're not advisement. expanding it. Say this again, I mean, uh, There is a built-in statute of two years. We always cut it back to one year. No, it, what the statute says is we can grant up to two years. The standard. Well, I thought my reading was that it is two years. Maybe I misread it. That's highly possible. No, I, the last meetings when we were granting the special permits, it was deliberate, I think, on everyone who made motions that said, we don't want you coming back because of this, so we granted up to the two-year period of time. Um, let's see. Now, okay, so if you go to the, if you go to 40A, Section 9, page 9 dash 4. Zoning ordinances or bylaws shall provide that a special permit granted under this section, under this section shall lapse within a specified period of time, not more than two years, which shall not include 
such time required to pursue or await the determination of an appeal referred to in Section 17, which is an appeal from the Board to the judicial uh, system, from the grant thereof, if a substantial use thereof has not sooner commenced except for good cause, or in the case of a permit for construction, if construction has not begun by such date except for good cause. So it's really in the first two lines that gives us the authority not more than two years is where the language was yeah. coming from. So that we, we're, we make it less than two years. I mean, the yes. statute gives us the authority to go up to two years. That's correct. As a condition? No, not as a we can grant what we've been granting. It says the zoning ordinance shall provide under the section shall lapse within a specified period of time, yeah. comma, not more than two years. So we can right. say it can lapse, but we can't have it lapse greater than two years. Two right. years so is the maximum we can grant the authority. If, if, I, if I may, uh, yes. Mr. Yes, it does. Sitting, sitting so on the condition. other side of this for the last umpteen years. Who's that, Joe? That, yes. I, I, I would say that just about every jurisdiction that I've dealt with in the Commonwealth just automatically goes to two years. This is this is an exception, and and part of the reason they do it is just to give the people the time to get their stuff done. Okay, well just, that's what we've been doing, but I don't think we can change the statutory scheme. I don't think we have the authority. But Jim, no, let's take it under advisement and let's figure out how we can approach it. What we've done, we've done. I don't think we can just grant without something before the board, some petition to say we're going to expand it for an additional year. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that may well be the case, but I think, and we are already making that consideration in the ones that we're cons uh, reviewing now, so okay. that may cover it. There may be absolutely no one that brings it up. It just was a thought to try to cut down on additional work for petitioners. No, I think that's what the board recognized last meeting with the two-year grants because we wanted right. to give them as much time as we could. Okay. Thank you. Is there any? You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anything else? Any other new business we need to discuss? I hope that wasn't a violation of the open meeting law. That was just a discussion. Well, that's the board. why I said for consideration at our next meeting. No, I got it. But I'm just smiling because I'm catching for myself. It was tonight. So. Okay. So there was no citizen input. Can I get a? There's nothing else to bring before the board. Can I get a motion to, um, uh, motion to, to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Dan Dupere? Yes. Second? Second. Carolyn, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. the floor of the Zoning Board of Appeals for June 30th is hereby closed. Thank you all.